Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to explore ways in which our society and our culture may be conditioning boys and men to be more angry and also possibly more violent than they naturally would be if you sort of gave them a more clean slate or if we had a culture that conditioned them in other ways. And I want to imagine more positive ways of helping condition people in such a way that they can be less angry and less violent. I was thinking about this because I've lost my temper a couple times recently. And any time I lose my temper, I tend to feel bad about it. Like, it's a really unpleasant experience for me. And I also am really concerned about other people. I care about people a lot. And if, if I like yell at someone, or even if I'm like slightly snippy with someone, I tend to feel pretty bad about it afterwards. Like, it's not a way that I want to treat other people. It's not a way I want to act towards others. So I tend to do a lot of reflection after I have experiences like this. And I was reflecting on this recently, and I was thinking about the different factors that influence whether or not I feel angry in a certain situation, and whether or not I lose my temper or am able to sort of like keep in a more level-headed state of mind where I feel more positively towards people and I express my concerns more respectfully. And I had some interesting insights in this. I noticed that there's kind of like this, this like spectrum or continuum, and anger is kind of at the one end of it, and at the other end of it is a state of being, or a state of being of the connection between me and another person, where I feel really warmly towards the person, like I feel positively towards them, and if I'm in that state of mind that's more positive and warm towards a person, I'm more likely to interpret something they do in a positive way. Like, they might do the same thing to me, and I might interpret it more positively, because I feel more positively about the person. Like, if I feel a sense of mistrust with someone, or distrust, or a sense of hostility towards someone, then they might do like a little small thing and I might really snap at them because like my, my threshold is kind of lower. And I've noticed that both in myself and others, people also have this sort of overall state of mind that's kind of independent of how they feel about each individual person. Like, I've noticed that when I'm under a lot of stress, I'm more likely to become snippy with people, or to get angry at people. Whereas, when I feel like everything is good in my life, I'm often able to deal with a lot of adverse things, and even deal with a lot of hostility, like overt hostility and anger directed at me, and I can handle it really gracefully when I'm in a healthy state of mind. So there are these two things. There's like the individual level of interpersonal warmth, between two people, and then there's also this overall level of like stress and irritability, and I think there can be also an overall level of sort of anger versus interpersonal warmth and caring and positive pe feelings towards people in general. So how does this relate to social conditioning? When I was a little boy, there were a lot of things that I encountered when I was growing up, uh, and one of the things that I noticed is that people would criticize me, and people would criticize other boys, when we deviated from traditionally male gender roles. Like, if I even brought up the idea of dressing in a more feminine way, I would be laughed at or criticized, or spoken of disapprovingly by adults. But I also noticed this other sorts of stuff, like disapproval of sort of playing certain types of games, and of interacting socially in certain ways. And one of them is hugs. Girls typically hug each other a lot, they touch each other affectionately a lot, whereas boys would be kind of shamed and criticized by other boys for doing this. It was like this self-perpetuating culture. And like, it was kind of tied to homophobia. Like, people would say that it's gay if guys are hugging, and they would talk about it like that's a bad thing. And if guys were like, you know, you're allowed to be kind of touchy and affectionate to some degree with other guys, like you could like kind of slap them on the back and like stuff like that. But if, if it got like too intimate or too touchy-feely, then it would shift over into that zone of criticism. And I was thinking about the relationship between this and anger, 
because as I grew older, I noticed that affectionate touch between people that I, like myself and someone that I feel positively about, that kind of touch can help me to really build a strong interpersonal bond with someone. Like, it, it makes me feel more warmly towards a person when I touch them in, in like, uh, an affectionate way. And similarly, when someone touches me in an affectionate way. And I was thinking about how there's a degree to which a culture which shames boys for this type of touch is going to condition them to do that less. And I think that that can indirectly condition them to be less empathetic. Because I know myself, when I am having a lot of intimate touch like that, I tend to feel more relaxed. I tend to feel more empathetic and warm towards everyone around me. Like, it certainly is focused on the people that are touching me or that I'm touching, but it extends to everyone. Like, if I feel more relaxed and more sort of warm fuzzy, I'm much less likely to get angry. So that was one insight. Another insight is in the sorts of games and things that people play. Uh, I think that there was a lot of pressure when I was growing up in sort of social conditioning of boys to play more like aggressive and competitive things. There were like violent action figure type things, more violent video games. Whereas with girls, they're sort of more like playing house, dolls, sort of games that are more based around like social interactions and like caring for people and sort of that kind of thing. And again, I think that those types of games both help people to feel more warm and empathetic, and they also help develop social skills for things like resolving conflict in ways that don't involve anger or violence or confrontation. So, I kind of feel angry thinking about this. I'm like, here I am struggling with my own anger, struggling to control my own temper and to not lose my temper in situations where people are imposing on me. And I'm, in, in order to do that, I'm struggling to unlearn these patterns of social conditioning that were instilled in me from when I was very young. So I want to draw attention to these things. I think it is completely absurd that we criticize and shame boys for affectionate touch with each other. Like, that is, that is crazy. I want it to stop now, and I want it to stop fully. And I think that if we stop that, it will help boys and men to be more empathetic. And it'll make the next generation of boys and men have an easier time being empathetic towards other people, and I think it will greatly reduce the level of anger and violence and hostility in our society. So I would love to hear from you if you have anything to add, any comments, please add a comment. And as always, I love when people share my videos and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you share this, it helps get this message out to more people, and what I ultimately want to do is influence society and lead to social change on these issues. Thank you!